Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out a newly released tool for the Godot game engine. This one is open source MIT licensed, and this is my favorite kind of tool, because it is aimed at lazy people, like myself. And what this allows you to do in a very, very easy way, is to add special effects or post-processing effects to your Godot game. Uh, and it's a post-processing tool for Godot, so definitely a well-named tool in terms of what it does. Uh, this is an open source project, it is under the MIT license, and what it allows you to do is add a number of post-processing effects. Here you see no effects, uh, then we've got, uh, actually I'm not sure what each ones are, bloom, fog, vignette, and so on. And we're going to just basically, we'll jump in and we'll take a look at the tool in action, then we'll come back to some of the details about it. So here you can see, this is a scene, nothing special happening, and here it is with all of the post-processing effects installed. And you can turn these off and on as you wish. Uh, so let's uh, let's jump out and take a closer look at the tool. Actually, let me just get out of full screen mode so you can see my start bar. And we'll head on over to Godot. So in order to get started with this guy, super simple. Basically, just drop down, pull down the uh, repository from GitHub. I will have that in the linked article down below. Uh, and then what you're going to want to do is just basically copy the post-processing tool into your, um, your codes folder, your own project. Um, and that's it. Then you kind of instantiate one under a control node like this guy right here. Basically, this is just an instance of post-processing tool. And then uh, it will do its thing. Now, you got a couple of ways of how you can hook this up. We'll get to that when we read the, um, the details over on GitHub. Instead, I will showcase what this tool is all about. And what this tool does is things that you can do um, in a lot of other ways. You can change the white balance, color splash, bloom, chromatic aberration, and so on. And these are things you can do in Godot right now using environments. At least most of them you can do using uh, the world environment. But what this is, is a heck of a lot easier. And again, I like things that make my life easy. So to bring it in, again, just drop that folder into your project and, and instantiate one of the post-processing tools in, you're done. So you see over here, it gives you um, a number of different properties. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine um, effects are built in. Any one of these you can turn off and on. So here, this is adjustment. So I can turn that one off here. This is for doing things like brightness, contrast, and saturation. Again, all things you can do in world environment, but this is so much easier. So if you want to come in here and change out the brightness, you could do so right here. So let's make it three times brighter and turn it back on so you can actually see the results. And two times brighter, and we'll jack up the contrast and so on. So you see you've got adjustments over the basic controls here. You also got control over the white balance. Uh, you can change the temperature and the tinting. And of course, we can turn that off and on. So if you want to do some tinting, why am I not getting the slider here? I don't know if that's currently a bug, but let's tint this out to 0.5. There you can see the end result of that one. Again, this can be turned off selectively as well. We've also got the ability to do a color splash. So see here. So if I want to color splash in some red, like so you can Boom, bring that in. Let's do a lot of it at on. So there you see color splash, pretty simple on the whole. Next up we have bloom. Here it is on and off. Not seeing a whole lot of difference to be honest. Let's let's jack the radius up and see what happens. All right, I'm not seeing much difference from bloom. I'm not 100% certain bloom is working to be honest. Uh, but you will also, mind you, bloom might also be runtime only. I'm not 100% certain, but it's the only one that is if that's the case. It's also apparently the one that has the most performance ramification, so I'm not sure what the deal is with Bloom there. But let's move on. Chromatic aberration on and off. So you can see it kind of gives you a distorted edge kind of effect. Uh, let's turn that back off. We can add noise. Uh, obviously, that's a lot of noise. So let's... How far down do we have to go to make that noise really mild? Oh, that turned into... Yeah, so there's your minimum level of noise. Uh, again, all of these, by the way, can be turned off and on using uh, script as well. Uh, you can have a glitch effect, if you so wish, with control over how the glitching works. And again, this is all stuff you could do with your own shaders as well. Uh, but this is something that is easy. So here you can see also that noise, that fog that's going over screen. Uh, that is done with the fog overlay. You can control over the frequency and the amplitude of it. You can also control the noise texture that is sent in uh, to make it work. So here I could actually do a new... Oh, where are my noise textures? Oh, new noise texture. I'll edit that guy out. And let's make this a simplex noise. And let's go in there. And zero point nine. Oops, that's not the right thing. Control a zero point nine. Alright, let's see what our noise does now. It's a very mild noise now. 
so that one is available there. And then finally, you've got the ability to do a vignette effect. That is what's causing the uh, focus around the edges corners. So you see, vignette is a pretty pronounced effect. Uh, you got control over it, the um, uh, softness of it, the multiplier of it, and the color of the vignetting. So let's see what happens if we do a white vignette. So there you can see the end result. Uh, there is no out-of-the-box vignette effect, by the way. So if you want to add this, that definitely makes your life easier. Now, if, in terms of how this is actually implemented, you're going to notice if you drill down in here, there's a couple of things going on. First off, um, you have the effect scripts. These are the things that control the various different parameters. They're straightforward GD script like so, and then you've also got a number of shaders behind the scenes. So if you want to add your own, you can as well. So let's go let's look at the vignette shader here, and there. And here you can see, this is the underlying shader effect. No, that's the, come on, here we go, here's the shader. So here you can see the actual shader that's being controlled here. So if you want to extend this and add your own shaders, uh, it should be relatively simple to do so as well. Uh, you'd probably have to bind the interface here, this point so you'd have to add a little bit here add a shader uh, and add an interface to it but that's about the extent of what you would have to do if you wanted to add more things to this whole process um, that's the process that you would have to go through so if you want to um, create a new extension here you'd add something to the TSN so you'd have an interface for it uh, you would add the shader behind the scenes and you would add the um, the interface to the shader which is this guy right there. And it's all fairly straightforward and simple code to start with. Again, it's a relatively simple process on the whole and project on the whole, but uh, it does make uh, some special effects that would otherwise be kind of tricky to create really, really simple. Again, just instantiate an instance of this guy after you've copied the folder into your project. And then it's uh, it's just drag and drop over here. Other than, uh, again, I'm not sure what is going on with Bloom. Uh, but back to the release notes. We'll look at a couple more of the details here. So there are the instructions, about as simple as it gets. Uh, you can see a GIF of it in action, which is kind of pointless because we just saw it. Uh, you can, again, call things directly from script if you so wish to do so. Uh, so if you want to change like, a vignette value based off of what's happening in the, in the, you know, the game world, you can do so. Um, it does have to be under a normal node, not a node 2D or 3D to get the layout button at the top. Uh, do not change the original scene. If you change anything in the original scene of the tool, change all instances to the default, so be careful. Uh, and Bloom has some problems. Uh, so yeah. That's that's an underlying issue. So that one's definitely being worked out. Uh, and yeah, so uh, why you wouldn't just use a world environment? One of the big reasons is this is easier. But second, it adds vignette and fog, which don't naturally exist. It would work in 3D. Um, it's a stack of nodes with their own shaders. You can delete whatever shader you don't want. Also handles everything alone and add uh, more effects as easily. So we saw that it'd be pretty easy to extend and add your own effects to this one. And can I use with animation player or tween mode? Yes, you can. Is it laggy? Performance is good on a pretty... Sorry, don't mean to insult your uh, your uh, computer here, uh, Mohammed, but uh, that's a pretty crap computer by today's standards. And uh, if it can run on uh, a dual core with three gigabytes of RAM, it should be pretty solid. And once again, the only real problematic prop right now is Bloom. Uh, so that's it. That is the... What are we calling this thing again? The post-processing tool for Godot, a very simple way to add post-processing effects to your Godot project. Hopefully some of you found that useful. All the relevant links will be down below. And yeah, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.